It's Saturday afternoon. The fire is just right and the beers are cold. The guests are on their way. But imagine the horror when you discover that your burro vos is not actually, well, vos. And the burgers are beans. As silly as it seems, this is what some people believe happens on a regular basis. Confused consumers buying meat products that contain no meat. In fact, the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development is so serious about this that it has drawn a line in the sand, outlawing the use of meaty names for non-meat products. Apparently, terms like bulltong, sausage, nugget, and even burger belong exclusively to meat. And the department has a beef with these so-called meat analogues. Meat analogues, the definition, if you want to put it clearly, is just, it's just fake meat. They, they normally call them plant-based. Billy Makafola is the executive officer of the Agricultural Standards Act at the Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development. He's in charge of regulating the classification, packing and labelling of processed meat products for sale in South Africa. The fact of the matter is that we have realised over some time that the product names that are regulated, that are exclusively reserved for meat products, are actually used in the sale of meat analogues. It's a sentiment echoed by many of our meat producers who believe in the exclusive use of meaty names. We would like simply that the products that are plant-based carry names that are not misleading and that accurately reflect the ingredients that are used in the products. Peter Gordon is a meat man, CEO of the South African Meat Processors Association, or SAMPA. What names shouldn't be used? Well, certainly we believe there are names like Bratwurst, um, Biltong, uh, those names we believe belong exclusively. Schnitzel would be another example. Um, and clearly when you use the name meat or chicken or beef in, in a descriptor, it should be a product that actually contains that ingredient. In South Africa, meat analogues have been around since the early 90s. And the industry has enjoyed significant growth, especially over the last few years. Today, many people choose plant-based meat alternatives for a variety of reasons. I ate meat for 30 years. And when I stopped eating meat, it wasn't because of the taste. It wasn't because I didn't enjoy a good burger at the braai. It was for environmental reasons, for ethical reasons, health reasons. Donovan Will is the CEO of ProVeg South Africa. He's a vegan who enjoys a meaty burger from time to time, as long as it's plant-based. Why shouldn't we be allowed to have something that, if it looks like a chicken burger, tastes like a chicken burger, you know, it does everything that a chicken burger is does. Why can't we call it a vegetarian chicken style burger? No one's trying to pretend that it's actually chicken. But apparently the mere use of the word chicken or beef on the packaging may mislead consumers. But I think there certainly are some products where people could pick up a pack, think they're buying a beef sausage or a lamb sausage and actually get home and find they haven't got what they wanted. And that's what we're trying to prevent. But this is not just about customer confusion. It's also about regulation. The problem kicks in when you have a standard that is associated with this product name and that standard is not necessarily applied when that name is invoked elsewhere in the sale of that very product. But instead of accommodating both the meat and plant-based varieties of a particular product, the Agricultural Product Standards Act of 1990 and its various amendments set out specifically what processed meat should and shouldn't contain. For example, the meat to fat ratio and specific ingredients which may or may not be used. So the problem is when you produce a plant-based sausage, for example, it contains no meat, no animal fat, virtually none of the ingredients used in traditional meat processing. So technically, it does not comply with the law. And if, according to the law, this sausage is not actually a sausage, you cannot label it as such. You can't even call it a veggie sausage. Even if you use a product name in conjunction with other name or other words, 
that is still prohibited. In June this year, the department dropped a bombshell. In order to comply with the law, all meat analogs and meat replacement products need to be renamed and relabeled with immediate effect. It's been a terrible few months, to be honest, um, in terms of uh, our orders. You know, they definitely plummeted uh, because retailers were not sure about what you know, the next steps were going to be. Natalia Costanova Fernandez, owner of Meraki plant based food, has been producing a range of vegan burger patties since 2018. When we first began, um, people were a little bit hesitant uh, to stock our products. I think uh, primarily because we are bean based and we're not an analog meat as such. Despite the fact that her bean burger patties do not try to imitate meat in any way, She's also been caught in the crossfire. Companies like Meraki were given just two months to comply with the department's new labeling regulations. And non-compliance would have severe consequences. I think about on the 18th of August, um, we were told that our products would be seized on the 22nd of August. Um, so obviously, you know, it's millions and millions of rands worth of product. We didn't really know what was going to happen with the product when it was seized, um, if it was going to be stored in, a, in the correct conditions. Then, just days before the Food Safety Agency was due to start confiscating meat analogues, the Consumer Goods Council came to the rescue, obtaining a last-minute court interdict against the department's plans. Despite buying them time until the 17th of November, the plant-based industry is facing a real challenge. Is this a move that could cost your company uh, a considerable amount of money? Absolutely, yes. Um, you know, should it go forward and we have to remove all of the products from the shelves, um, it will be a considerable financial loss for us, um, especially for us being a very small company. So um, it could essentially you know, make us close our doors, which is, um, it would be devastating. We are currently in a situation where a lot of the products' prices are coming down. You know, the, we are trying to get to parity, and unfortunately, having to change labels, having to hire lawyers to find out what's happening, having to delay the import of products because we're not sure if they're going to be um, seized, these things all cost money. And when a company incurs these costs, obviously, unfortunately, these costs are going to be handed over to the consumer. At a time of significant global pressure for us to cut meat consumption to reduce our carbon footprint, many have questioned the department's timing and motives. Are you trying to push meat sales? No, no, we shouldn't. Remember, we are not against meat analog at all. Now, of course, to is to regulate whatever gets sale, protect the consumer, but at the same time ensure that there's, there's, there's level playing field in terms of products that are actually being put out for sale there yeah. between all the traders. Do you acknowledge that there's a real need to uh, change our eating habits, our consumption of meat? I think there's a need for people to have the freedom to choose to eat what they want to eat. And I think people have the right to decide whether they want to eat a vegetarian product, a vegan product, a plant-based product, or a combination, or a meat product. Mm. Delicious. But the proposed changes to the labeling of so-called meat analogues presents us with a problem. What do we call this if we can't call it a burger? We were using the word patty, but that's not allowed. So yes, thinking out of the box, uh, possibly a fritter, a disc. I mean, that sounds really unappealing. Um, so I think we may call it a, a bean-based thingamajig. And while the meat analog sector gets its head around its patties, discs and thingamajigs, the Department of Agriculture is adamant that if it's not made from animal flesh, it's simply not a burger. I have to be honest, in some respects, this seems um, rather petty. Well, well, the law is the law. It has to be implemented. Everyone knows that South Africa has a lot of issues that the government really should be prioritizing instead of worrying about whether or not people are confused about a veggie burger. But you're not looking at the worst case scenario. Somebody who walks into a supermarket and walks away with what they think is a real meat burger 
and it's a veggie burger. And the worst thing would be if they actually got home and enjoyed it and had to tell all their friends that they actually enjoyed the veggie burger. Thanks for watching. Have you heard about our new podcast? It's like carte blanche, but without the Sunday blues. Find Carte Blanche the podcast with new episodes uploaded weekdays on all major podcast platforms. Unique stories, unique perspectives, wherever you go.